My name is Carlin Borisenko, and you are listening to the Actively Unwoke podcast. If you want to listen to back episodes of the podcast, head over to activelyunwoke.com slash podcast. You can find the full archives there, as well as links to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts from. That's all on activelyunwoke.com slash podcast. All right. So I know it's been a little bit of a minute since I posted a new podcast, but I've had some other projects going on. I've been working on launching and finishing the crowdfunding for the school's Expose campaign to help train 10,000 parents how to find out exactly what the schools are teaching their kids. I have a new project called Art of the Trigger. You can go to artofthetrigger.com if you want more information on that. It's a satirical self-help site with real self-help just to, you know, keep us all sane as we are fighting back against the woke left. But it is time for me to record another Actively Unwoke podcast. And I have a lot of thoughts that have been building up over the past you know, several weeks or so. So you're probably going to get three or four podcasts in pretty rapid succession for the next couple of episodes. In this one, I want to talk about the real danger in education. Because I really believe that most people, when it comes to fighting back against the woke left in the schools, are focused on the wrong thing. They're focused on the easy thing, not the hard thing. They're focused on the surface level thing, not the important thing. And I understand why people might focus on the easy thing, because it's easy. And once you accomplish it, well, you feel accomplished. You feel like you've gotten something done. You've made progress. And I'm not going to suggest that the progress is meaningless. All progress is progress. All wins are wins. And all wins should be celebrated, but it's important that we don't mistake the easy thing with the necessary thing. Because sometimes when we mistake the easy thing with the necessary thing, once we accomplish the easy thing, we we clap our hands together as if to dust them off. And we turn around and we go back and sit in our easy chair and say, okay, I accomplished the thing. I don't need to worry about it anymore. But in fact, you didn't accomplish the thing. You just accomplished the easy component of that thing. But the hard part, the part that really is the thing that's the most impactful, the hard part on which we are going to win or lose the fight against the woke left, that's still there. It still exists. You're just ignoring it because you wanted to feel accomplished because you got the easy thing done. Now, I'm being a little generic in how I'm speaking about this, but I think you'll see where I'm going. When it comes to fixing the schools, the easy thing is to ban the books with the porn in them. The hard thing is to acknowledge that the schools as a system are fundamentally corrupted. And until that corruption is solved for, at a systemized level, the schools are going to be woke for the foreseeable future. The easy thing to focus on is the books with the naked people and the sex and the gender and the pronouns. And I'm not suggesting those things are not unimportant because they are. But it's the easy thing. The system is the hard thing. And the system is where the danger really is. So this started for me today when Moms for Liberty tweeted out the following. Politics is downstream from culture and culture is downstream from education. The capture of educational institutions is the reason for the culture war we see right now. Are we too late? What must be done to reclaim education in America? Now, Moms for Liberty in this is 100% correct. They're correct. Politics is downstream from culture, and culture is downstream from education. And the American educational institutions are captured. And they are correct to ask, are we too late? Because there's a good chance that we might be. And then their final question, what must be done to reclaim American education? And I You know, I couldn't help myself. I have to get in a little bit of a dig at Moms for Liberty because I really do have a problem with Moms for Liberty placing so much emphasis 
on getting books out of school libraries. Now, for me, and everyone has to make their own decision about this, for me, I don't feel comfortable with the idea of banning books. And I understand the arguments. I understand the arguments about you don't want sexually explicit books around kids. Okay, yes, I I agree with you. I just don't think it's a good look. And I think it is an extremely slippery slope. In my ideal world, we change culture to make it socially unacceptable or even, quite frankly, socially unthinkable for those books to ever be included in the school library or in the school curriculum. Again, that's not the easy answer, but I think it actually is the correct answer. The easy answer is banning them. But then what do you sacrifice with that? You get labeled as book banners for the entire rest of your lives. And and this movement, and I said it from the very beginning, when Moms for Liberty first started doing this, I said from the very beginning, this is going to come back to haunt all of us, and it has. And I know Moms for Liberty doesn't want to hear that. And there's a great many things that this organization is doing well. I don't want it to make it seem as though I think that the entire organization of Moms for Liberty is not worthwhile. I do think they are doing some worthwhile things. But the book banning shit, pardon my language, the book banning shit has hurt all of us. Now you're going to argue, it's not book banning. They shouldn't be in the libraries anyway. They're not banning books. They're just saying they can't be in the school libraries. For normal people, and we always have to remember that we are speaking to normal people. The people that are probably listening to this podcast right now, you are probably the abnormal. No offense, I am too. But you are probably not a normie. And so when a normie hears that parent groups are trying to pull books out of the school library, they think book banning. And again, I'm not suggesting that it's not a worthwhile fight on some level. I understand why parents don't want their kids looking at sexually explicit books. However, the problem is that those sexually explicit books are a symptom of a significantly larger problem. In the grand scheme of things, Those sexually explicit books are a distraction. Yes, I said it. They are designed to distract you. They are designed to take your eye off of what really matters. Because while they're teaching those sexually explicit books, do you know what else they're doing? They're writing Marxist ideology into every single school policy. They're creating entire offices and equity divisions, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice divisions at the district level, not just at the school level, at the district level, which means that when something is created at the district level, it flows into all the other schools. They're doing required and optional teacher training at all levels, starting in elementary school, but also existing in middle school, also existing in high school, sometimes crossing all three of those grade levels. They're requiring teachers to go to training that pushes the woke left ideology on them. And any training the teachers go to, we can make the base assumption that at least a smidgen of that training will end up in the classroom. While groups like Moms for Liberty are complaining about a book in an 8th grade class. They are completely distracted from the wholesale systemization. I got the word right eventually. They are distracted from the wholesale systemization of the woke left ideology in K-12 public schools in America. It is the very definition of, like, you remember that movie Up with the Dog? and the dog is easily distracted by the squirrel. It's like, you know what's happening at a policy level in these school districts. They are writing it into the code of conduct. They are writing it into the standard operating procedure. 
They are writing it into job descriptions. They are creating entire divisions, not only at the school, but also the district level. There are multiple staff members in every school district that are now solely responsible for implementing a Marxist ideology for your kids. They're even bringing in psychologists because they're also practicing psychology on your kids without a license. They're doing all these things right out in the open. Most of the time they're posting about it on the school website. And you're looking right at that and you can see it happening and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, there's so much. It's an overwhelming fire hose of information, an overwhelming fire hose of nonsense at every single level in the school district. But on the other side, you have a sexually explicit book in which you can see cartoons having sex and then a paragraph or two about it that is in the eighth grade classroom and you're like, squirrel. And I'm not, again, suggesting that sexually explicit book isn't a problem. But what people really need to start to understand is that it is a symptom of a much larger, much more complex problem. Say you get that sexually explicit book pulled out of school. Okay, fine, well, and good. But guess what? There's going to be another one coming right behind it and another one coming right behind that and another one coming right behind that because you haven't fixed the problem. You have just gotten rid of one out of an infinite number of symptoms of that problem. It's like you haven't cured the flu. It's just that maybe your nose stopped running for an hour and man, did that hour feel good where you could actually breathe again. But guess what? That runny nose is coming back after the cold medicine wears off because you haven't cured yourself of the flu yet. You just mitigated one of the symptoms for a temporary period of time. So if I were to change what we're doing in terms of becoming more focused on the things that are necessary to reclaim American education, as Moms for Liberty asked in this tweet. What I would do, probably, is to not spend so much time on the symptoms and be instead working on the systemic nature of this problem. You want to know why the woke left pushes systemic racism, systemic racism, systemic racism. They talk about everything being systemic. They talk about everything at the system level. Because that's exactly what they're doing. The ironclad law of woke projection. They always tell us what they're doing. The problem is that the system level is not only overwhelming to look at, but it is also boring to look at. It is boring to read policy documents. It is boring to watch school board meetings. It is boring to look at the teacher trainings. I'm not going to lie. I have watched more hours of this stuff than anyone else on the planet. And it is boring. Probably 75% of the time. But we have to do it. We must do it. Because until we start understanding the problem at a system level, any progress we make in terms of getting those sexually explicit books out of school, you know, you're going to have like a victory for a day. It's going to feel really good. But next week, there's just going to be a different book and a different one after that. You know, people get angry when I tell them, stop banning books. But I don't want my kids watching sexually Mrs. Wonder Hero. Me, 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 me. That's literally what happens. That's not an exaggeration. That's what happens. They they lose their minds when I say this is not a good use of energy. This is not a good use of focus. They lose their minds. And part of the reason is they don't know what else to do. Well, it's not that they don't know what to do. It's that they don't want to do the hard, the boring the overwhelming, the necessary thing. That's what it is. It's overwhelm. It's fear. It's, I don't even, you know, it is, there is something that is terrifying to people 
about trying to take on the problem at a system level. And so because they are afraid of taking it on at a system level, they focus on these cosmetic problems. And they feel accomplished after they they fix the cosmetic problem. And then if someone comes along and says, okay, yeah, okay, you fixed a minor sliver of a problem, but there's really a whole mountain of a problem over here. Well, guess what? That that parent probably had to fight for a month and a half to fix that tiny problem. And now you're saying you need to fix something a thousand times larger than that one tiny problem? That's going to feel overwhelming. I'm not suggesting I don't understand it, but until we have more people stepping up to fix things at the system level, then we are going to be lost. Here are some things that you need to do. If you have kids in school, or even if you're just interested, I don't have kids in school. So it's not a requirement to be a parent. Even though I don't have kids in school, I can wholly recognize the problem with what is going on in education that is going to affect all of us at some point. So here's what everyone needs to do. You need to go onto the school district website. Not the high school level, not the elementary school level. You need to start at the district level. Because this tends to be the place where you can find public information very easily about what your school is doing. And just assume that if it's happening at the district level, at least a little bit of that, has trickled into the school that you're in within that district, okay? So I want you to go onto your school district website. I want you to do a search for equity, not equality, equity, because equity is the code word that they're using in many schools. The language that they're using is different in every single school, so it might not be the same, but equity is a pretty safe bet. If you don't find anything for equity, or even if you do, quite frankly, I want you to look for anti-racism. You can try looking for critical race theory, but you probably will not find anything because they know better than to use the term critical race theory now. You can try culturally responsive learning, culturally responsive teaching. You can look for social emotional learning. But just do a search for equity and just see what comes up. You're probably going to find an equity plan. You may find equity integrated into the school budget, which means that they are allocating your budget, your taxpayer dollars, based on immutable characteristics instead of, you know, based on providing an equal opportunity for all students. You want to look around for what your school district is doing for teacher training. They usually have the professional development listed on their website. If they do not have it there, then call the school and ask them. If the school doesn't want to answer, you can FOIA that information. This is not the sexy, glamorous stuff. This isn't looking at the sexually explicit cartoon comic. This is the boring stuff. You're going to have to read a lot of documents. The Chicago Public School Districts has like a 76-page equity plan on their website. 76 pages. You're going to have to read that if you're in Chicago. Many school districts have something similar. These plans are extremely long. You want to know what their five-year plans are. You want to know when they're talking about it at the school board meeting. These are the things that matter most. Because so few parents are taking an active interest in any of this. That the schools are just getting away with things willy-nilly because they know they can. Because it's only ever about the books that parents are speaking up right now. This is how it is necessary to fight back. But if you are spending all your time focusing on the small and easily solvable problems, the hard and bigger problems are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and more insurmountable every single day you drag your feet or you dawdle or you procrastinate. You have got to start looking at the boring documents at the system level. And we need everyone on deck. Stop waiting for other people to do it for you. If you don't know how to do it, I'm trying to build a program to teach you how right now. It is about to be funded for an initial crowdfunding period. It will launch in January 2023. You can head over 
to unwokearmy.com slash parents if you want to find out more about that and get information about how you can join the program when it launches in January. I feel so strongly that this is how we defeat the public schools, that I'm going to spend months of my life building out an online training program to make sure that parents have the information they need, and I will include coaching and live sessions in that to teach you so we can work through these challenges together. But what I need is for you to commit to being a person that's going to take action on the important things. Because these are the things that matter most. This is how we change the game. This is how we turn things around. All right. Again, if you want more information on the Schools Exposed program, crowdfunding is about to wrap up on Indiegogo, but you're still going to be able to get some perks after the initial crowdfunding period because then it's going into a latent fundraising period. So you're still going to be able to buy spaces in the program and stuff like that. In theory, if everything works out as planned. But again, you can find the Indiegogo campaign by going to unwokearmy.com slash parents. That's going to redirect you right over to Indiegogo. You can also just search for Schools Exposed on Indiegogo and it'll come right up and you can learn more about what I'm doing. And if you find it valuable, please enroll, please share it out with your networks and uh, get in touch and let me know if I can help you in any way. I'm happy to help where I can, but we all need to step up because if we don't start creating an army of people looking at education at the system level, then we really are going to lose. I'm trying to help everyone step up. That's what I'm going to focus on. Everyone else has to figure out their role as well. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this episode. Again, I'm going to do a couple more episodes in pretty rapid succession over the course of the week just to make up for a little bit of absence. And I appreciate the patience. But that's all I have for right now, guys. We'll see you soon.